Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Gaming to the Com video, we're going to be discussing all things AMD processor related. This includes some of the APUs, for example, Pinnacle Ridge, the fact that Zen 3 is already being worked on. That's right, not just the successor to Zen, but the successor to the successor. And also some updated information concerning Zen and scheduling. And I want to touch on that first because a number of you have messaged me about this, and I do understand where you're coming from, you really want me to talk about it. However, to be honest, this is still something we're kind of testing in-house. So I don't want to talk massively about it, but I do figure it's fair. For those who are considering buying the processor, um, you kind of know what the state of affairs is. So basically, there are a couple of issues with Ryzen at the moment. Some of them are BIOS related. For example, one of the issues we have is certainly BIOS related, and it's not just me that's got these problems. A number of people have these, not just with the Asus boards, but also a couple of others. And this might range from you simply can't select uh, faster memory down to some memory uh, is physically not being detected, all the way down to like crashing and other bits and bobs. But it is primarily BIOS related, simply because there are st still kinks in those BIOSes, and they will, of course, be patched. And that's one of the reasons that you should keep an eye on BIOS revisions if you've just bought a new motherboard. Which, you know, that's fine, fair enough. Drivers are obviously still improving, for example, chipset drivers. But one of the big issues, one of the primary problems, is actually a bug in Windows 10's scheduler. Now, I won't give you too much information on what a scheduler does, but all it simply does is basically scheduled work, the operating system is scheduling work across whatever application and assigning that work to a processor core. That's the too long didn't read version of it anyway. So, AMD have, of course, released Ryzen, and it is their first processor which offers SMT, or Simultaneous Multi-Threading. So you have one primary thread for whichever core, and you also have an auxiliary thread. The idea behind this is that each core um, is allocated, I guess, a maximum instruction throughput. The idea is that the SMT thread will be used only when it has an opportunity to run. So in short, the basic premise is that you won't get the same performance of, let's say, if you doubled the real number of cores, but it's almost like if data is being, you know, waiting to come through or whatever, it essentially um, optimizes the processor's pipeline so data is constantly being fed through. Now, Intel's hyperthreading technology does work very, very, very similarly. And it's worth noting that often SMT hyperthreading, whatever, doesn't always provide a massive increase in performance. It does heavily depend upon the application. Heavily multi threaded applications might get 10, 20, 30, 40%, whereas less multi threaded applications might get bupkus. Obviously, it does depend on the number of threads that that application can hold on. But there is a problem with Windows 10 scheduler with Ryzen. There are a couple of issues, but the primary one is that it's basically just not identifying how much memory Ryzen has available. One of the issues is that it doesn't actually realize that some of the threads are virtual or, you know, not actual real cores. Therefore, it's inappropriately providing a huge amount of workload to those threads. Another issue, from what I can gather, and there are a couple of reports on this, that it actually believes that the Ryzen CPU has 136 megabytes of cache. That's slightly more than what it really has. It's about 20 for the Ryzen 7s. Obviously, that's not improving things, and that also explains why you start getting a lot of frame rate dips. Some applications um, do benefit just by simply disabling SMT. Unfortunately, there's not a huge amount that we can do right now unless you want to go back to like Windows 7. So it just kind of is what it is. The reason this is happening a lot more in um, heavily multi threaded work is just because of the nature of the beast. In those instances, the applications are much better able to hold on to the data and process it. But in games, especially DirectX 11 games, when they're not heavily multi-threaded anyway, that explains some of the disparity we're seeing and also some of the core under the utilization. For example, despite the fact that it appears it's 
CPU limited in an application. For example, we ran a 1080p test a couple of times and I did say that I believe there is something inherently wrong with these tests. Do not take these tests as indicative of Ryzen's problems. I, I mentioned that a couple of times, but it was like we were getting 80 frames, 90 frames a second with a GTX 1080, whereas a 7700K was getting, you know, 130 or whatever. And there was obviously something wrong because, as I mentioned, it was like the CPU utilization was not even that high. And in some cases, other users have reported they're getting like 40, 50% of CPU utilization. If it was CPU problem, as in like the CPU wasn't able to keep up with the GPU, you would see the CPU with 100%. So it's essentially just growing pains and bugs and just the fact that, to be honest, this is the first time AMD have released an SMT processor. So some of it is definitely Microsoft's problems. Some of it is BIOS related issues. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. But let's talk about more happy stuff. Happy, happy, happy world. Now, we all know Polaris is the current, Vega is the future. Well, we don't know exactly what the future of Vega brings. That one's a bit of a... Yes, quite. But anyway, Navi is going to be the successor to Vega. But what we do know is that, uh, according to Mark Papermaster, and this was an interview with PC World, we will be seeing a Zen last at least four years. But it's not just that Zen 2 is going to be here. They're actually using a leapfrog design. What does that mean? Well, it means that you've got one team, of course, working on Zen 2, which naturally makes sense considering Zen, the first Zen, Ryzen, if you will, is currently out on a bell. But they also have another team that's working on Zen 3. So you're going to have multiple iterations to the processor. Do you remember, originally, AMD were imp hoping for an IPC of about 40% over their previous excavator technology, which is not shabby, but they managed instead to achieve 52%. Now, AMD in previous interviews have said that they are not just looking to improve the performance by simply increasing clock speed, but they want real tangible benefits one generation to another. And in which case we could expect to see an IPC gain from one generation of Ryzen to another. Obviously, the problem with IPC gains is that it becomes a bit of a thing. And most people also assume that it's performance, which it kind of is, but in a very weird way. It's basically instructions per clock rather than, you know, performance. So in short, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get higher levels of performance. It's just an indicator that performance is going to be higher because you're achieving more instructions per clock over your previous architecture. So what we do know, however, is that there are going to be a few extra ridges coming to the lineup. And these do include Raven Ridge, which is being reported to launch in the second half of 2017. Some folks are saying it's going to have enhanced Zen Core. We just don't know at the moment. But what we are aware of is this processor is certainly going to be very impressive. It has been basically confirmed at this point that Raven Ridge SKUs will have a range of quad core variants. In other words, you're going to have four Ryzen CPUs, uh, yeah, sorry, processor cores with SMT enabled. And this will also be including Vega. Now, the price of these is expected to be quite moderate around the 200 to 300 us dollar mark and wouldn't be surprising the purpose of these processors isn't necessarily to play doom at 4k the purposes of these processors are is either for laptops or perhaps even a desktop with modest gaming on the mind and according to oc3d that's overclock 3d.net there are also rumors that we're going to be seeing a pinnacle ridge in 2018, which naturally will have an even further improvement to the current uh, lineup, and this will replace Summit Ridge. And naturally, this will mean it will be Zen Plus slash Zen 2, whatever you want to call it. A number of you have also messaged me concerning delittling the processor, which essentially means you're removing the CPU's protection and directly exposing the core itself. And without the integrated heat spreader, also known as the IHS to its friends and its buddies, the temperatures typically go down. However, the level of protection on for the processor, in other words, you can easily crush the exposed cores. So it's not exactly the best of the ideas to delittle because it can be A, risky to remove it, and B, even if you do remove it fairly safely, it's quite easy, especially if you're accident-prone, to be like, oops, 
processor toasted by simply crushing the core. And yes, I've read a few stories about that. However, a overclocker, and I'm probably going to pronounce his name incorrectly, but it is, um, I believe it's Durator. But anyway, he has managed to, to delittle the processor without destroying it. And he has said that the processor itself is actually pretty well put together. There are a soldered layer on the die which connects directly to the IHS. One of the reasons, by the way, it was quite hard to remove. And there are also gold plating which is necessary for a perfect soldering. So, with all of that said, the thermal conductivity of the IHS is actually pretty damn good in and of itself. So, what did he manage to achieve? What was the rewards for his uh, removal of the splendor about two degrees. So in other words, if you're thinking to yourself, well oh, gee, I really want to do a little my processor for the best thermal conductivities, I would probably say don't do it unless you really are chasing the highest end clocks. And even so, what's two degrees really going to mean? Unless you're doing like suicide benching and even then good luck to you. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. I know I'm missing quite a bit of stuff, but honestly, it's just a bit chaotic at the moment. And uh, that's kind of good, because that means that we've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline. I know I keep saying that, but there is just a lot of stuff we're working on, and it's coming on quite well. So hopefully over the next couple of days, we shall see previews of that. And I'm also arranging an interview. And for, for some reason or another, there's a very loud, loud bird outside. If you can hear that, I don't know if you can. But I'm probably going to say you can because my eyes are literally bleeding at this point. That's a very na naughty bird. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.